Our final session, ladies and gentlemen, stay with us. Our final session, then we've got a nice surprise for you right at the end. It is going to be led by uh, my colleague John Sheba, who's based out of New York for TechCrunch. And he's going to be moderating a panel with Will Marshall from Planet Labs and Ron Goodman from HealthTap. They're going to be talking about one of the hottest topics here at uh, Davos, which is about crisis technology, crisis situations, humanitarian hey. issues, hey. and off you go. So, oh, here John, we go. go, go. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to step on your toes there, Mike. Um, <laughs> From saving money to saving lives, uh, that's what we're all about here in this last panel. It's uh, a vital subject, I think, uh, no pun intended. Um, and I have two people who are, are very much engaged in this um, from different aspects. One takes a more global view, while one is much more personal. A uh, show of hands just from the audience, who here knows what Planet Labs does? Raise your hand if you're familiar with Planet Labs at all, at all. Anyone? No, no one knows about Planet, well, a couple people. And uh, how many people know what HealthTap does? One, two, three, more know about HealthTap than Planet. Oh, it well, there you go. <laughs> well, I'm gonna let you um, just take a moment, talk a little bit about where Planet Labs sort of fits into this global ecosystem of startup technologies and other technologies. And then Ron will let you talk a little bit about HealthTap and we'll get into uh, sort of how y'all got involved in uh, humanitarian relief efforts from there. So, uh, Will, if you wouldn't mind talking a little bit about what Planet Labs does and how it works with sort of crisis situations. Absolutely, yeah. So, at Planet Labs, we uh, design and build ultra-compact little satellites, literally this big, and we launch them into space in large numbers and operate them there. And what they do is they take pictures of the ground, so they're all pointed down and taking pictures. And with these pictures, uh, what we're, uh, our goal is to image every point on the Earth's surface every single day um, so that we can track things like deforestation, track the ice caps, figuring out and, and stopping illegal fishing, yep. helping improve agricultural yields in mm. developing countries. Um, there's a huge variety of applications of this data set. It's basically, the way I think about it is more real-time sensing systems for right. our planet to help us to take care of it and help people make smarter decisions about resources. And Ron, briefly, if you could talk a little bit about sort of the core HealthTap business, and then we'll get into to more about how these technologies, which are amazing in their own right, can be applied in, in sort of crisis situations. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I was very excited to see that quite a few people are actually uh, using HealthTap and know HealthTap here. And I think that uh, HealthTap is the first global health practice. Uh, we have 85,000 physicians in our network, US licensed physicians. We actually have now 2,500 physicians in New Zealand as well. Uh, and we create access to doctors and their knowledge 24 7 from any mobile device or web connection. Uh, we serve hundreds of millions of people all over the world. Uh, and we're excited about the whole notion of giving people immediate access to doctors and their knowledge. Uh, you know, under the system, we, we created the first health uh, operating system, uh, which means that we can provide services, health services, to people from query to cure. From the moment they're looking for information, to connecting them to doctors, all the way to engaging them after the doctor visit. Uh, and we are serving now consumers, but we're also serving doctors, individual doctors, small practices, medium-sized practices, and even healthcare systems. Uh, we started in the US, but we started expanding globally, actually in 2015. And that's been going very well. We made some announcement. We're about to make more announcement in this space. And uh, we're very excited about it. Well, so it's interesting. In part, I think uh, both businesses speak to this notion of uh, a fourth industrial revolution, which, which is sort of predicated on data, right? I mean, if we think about what's driving all of the, the conversations that are happening here at Davos right now, it is about the role that data plays in every aspect of, of a business. Now, um, when people think about data, about global visualization, about satellite imaging, uh, you know, crisis situations and crisis intervention isn't necessarily the first thing that comes to mind. Will, how was it that y'all had the, the aha moment or when did you start thinking about ways to apply the, 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 
the sort of images that, that Planet Labs has been seeing to things that are, are real sort of issues for the planet and not just money-making ventures for the big businesses that are also here at Davos? Well, the main reason we started Planet was to help the world, actually, out of the gate. Um, but uh, the, the, the first time the rubber hit the road, if you like, on this was the N N Nepal earthquake last year. And what we ha did was we just open-sourced our imagery of that area and had a crowdsourced campaign for people scanning all this satellite imagery to try and see if they could find where people have been afflicted by the earthquake earthquake, how uh, to help relief efforts get there with the aid and so forth. Mm. And that was very successful, a, a set of villages that no one had seen on the map before, literally were off the map in Nepal, right. um, uh, got found, were affected by mudslides and, and relief effort got sent in. And that was the first time, but it, and that's the kind of example where we'd love to help that sort of situation all the time. And ha has that snowballed? Are there, how many other c scenarios now have you been involved with where you've actually sort of yeah. either opened up the data or, or supplied the data to... Um, to, to NGOs or to governments to, to sort of work in relief scenarios? Well, we, we, we work with uh, NGOs all the time now. Um, we, we're still in a relatively early phase. We're still launching our satellites. We've launched just over 100 satellites to date. It's already the largest wow. fleet of Earth imaging satellites in history. Wow. Um, but we are still doing a lot more. We're launching more than 200 more satellites this year. Um, and, and, and so the point is we're still building that capacity up and building our platform up for people to be able to get access to it. So it's early days, but we're already working with NGOs around the world to try and utilize the data. And Ron, there was also sort of a eureka, well, not a eureka moment. This is, a, it's not, let's yeah. not be glib about it. But there is also a moment where, where sort of uh, the application for health taps technology to a crisis situation sort of came to the fore. Could you talk about that a little bit? Sure, what absolutely. Uh, like, look, uh, health tap is saving lives every day, right? right? So tens of thousands of people send us notes saying, thank you for saving my life. It told the story. We're always inspired by that. But, you know, there was something that happened, you know, just a couple of months ago. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting a call uh, from our, one of our customers, our large customers, uh, Flex, which uh, used to be called Flextronics. Uh, we deployed Health Up Compass with Flex uh, also in 2015, uh, and we provide to their uh, employees a replacement for the benefit card. So they manage all their healthcare from their mobile devices, from a web connection. Uh, so we did the deployment here in the United States, and then I'm getting a call from Flex uh, telling me, look, we have a situation in, in uh, Chennai, India, uh, where there's a big flood, a big disaster. Yeah, 400 people died in that flood, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was pretty big. And... Uh, and, and they had several thousand employees in, in, in Chennai, uh, Flex. And uh, things are happening in real time, and they're saying, can you help? And I said, of course, you know, we can do whatever we, we can. We never deployed in India, but we, we're happy to, to do what we can. I'm not sure if people speak English there, because it's not their mother tongue. But yeah, we're there. We're all, the entire team went into it, and literally in a couple of hours, we went from getting the message to actually fully deploying our enterprise application in Chennai using just mobile phone uh, that we had email addresses and some phone numbers, and that's all we had. But the interesting thing is, even in a flood region, you know, when, they, when, they, when everything falls apart, the phone still remains in people's hand, and there's a great viable tool to, to access to get to people. Yeah. And, and the entire team did an amazing job, the engineering team, the, the deployment team, and literally something that usually we do in a couple of weeks, we literally did in a couple of hours, right? We deployed it there, uh, and within minutes, people start using it. But the interesting thing was that my chief medical officer, Dr. Jeff Rutledge, went into the, the medical expert network. We have more than 85,000 physicians, and literally within minutes, thousands of doctors said, I'm ready to jump in and help. And more than that, we used the knowledge graph that we had, found the, the physicians that are infectious disease specialists, a disaster relief specialists, and they came up also in minutes and started creating something that only we do. We have a library that we serve more than 4 billion doctor answers today, and we have an engagement module that has checklists, and they started creating these checklists and these tips right. that were specific to this disaster area. Right. And people used it literally within minutes from us sending them to their phones. Do you see any corollary with that? Yeah, Absolutely. I was just about to say that, I mean, this, this jumps to mind of uh, an example of how these technologies can be related. I mean, obviously, we could help detect that flood, figure out where it is, where, and, and help the disaster responders know where, which bridge is okay and which bridge is not, and so forth. And they're very synergistic technologies. In many yeah. ways, we're at this such an early phase. I mean, you were talking about this sort of revolution. I, I think of it as the global sensing revolution, or at least that's the part we're part of. Right. 
it. Which also relates to drones and underwater submersibles and ro robots everywhere and even the phones in our pocket are these sensors everywhere. It's a global sensing system. The satellites are part of that. But they, they could be mated with these other sorts of data sets and, and, and systems in a way that, that the, the power of that is just tremendous. Yeah. We, we've only just begun to even see the benefits of these individual technologies sort of stovepipe and yeah. individual data sets. But when they come together, it's just uh, bewildering to think of all the options. It's really fascinating. Now, one of the, one of the interesting things I find is the, the choice that, that y'all have made on different sides of things. Um, Planet Labs is open sourcing all of this data for, uh, for uh, companies or for NGOs to use. And HealthTap, in your case, Ron, y'all are, are making it into another product. Now, uh, can, can you talk about sort of the calculus that goes into that? I, is there a point at which, Ron, you would consider opening it up for free to someone for a service? And at some point, might you charge people yeah. for, for the use of the, the technology? And sort of how that calculus plays so, out. So for us, uh, it's, um, and by the way, it's not all open source. We've open sourced some of our data, um, and, but we still have commercial clients paying for our data as well. I mean, what we anticipate is that a lot of the small scale users, um, we, we can get them the data without yeah. much cost or zero cost, but then the larger scale users will have to pay. Right. Um, but uh, in doing it that way, we believe that most of the humanitarian applications will, you know, the, the Kenyan farm or the person that's in need of disaster response can get access to this. Right. We, uh, and of course, in any particular circumstance, we can open source data. Right. But the calculus is about um, the fact, that, you know, you asked about that in the more general say, sense. I think the calculus is about how do we do the most good whilst creating a sustainable business model. Right. It's do good, do good first, how do we create a sustainable business model? And we need a, a sustainable business model, otherwise we won't be able to do good. Right. So this is, it's not just uh, for shits and giggles that we want the business <laughs> yeah. as well. Yeah. Right? Ron, I, I, do you have anything you want to add to that? I mean, yeah, I feel sure, like it's, that... It's the mantra that we have at HealthTap, which is doing good while doing well at scale, yeah. right? So the whole notion of, you know, we serve more than 4 billion doctor answers to date, and the, the good majority of, of these answers are available to people, you know, online to find them, checklists, uh, all kind of tips that are available. What we want to do with this service that is actually a paid service is to actually s serve multinational organization, mm -hmm. uh, government, uh, you know, uh, all kind of organizations, even cities, right, uh, that actually care about creating uh, customized solutions that will help their people in case of a disaster right. to deal with these things when we actually are deployed in people's mobile phones. So we can actually respond not in a couple of hours, but in a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. And there is an advantage to organize it in advance. There is a cost associated with that because in our, in our free service, you can access these answers in our library, you can access this checklist, you know, in our, in our engagement module, in our paid service, there is more to that, right? right. So we guarantee the deployment of the doctors there, right. you know, that costs us money. Right. Uh, we need to also create, to bring doctors that will be there in real time to react and send people customized messages on what's happening in the particular region, right? And that, again, requires people to be on staff to make sure that they're doing that. Talking about data, which is really, I'm excited about that because it's a, it's a use of amazing opportunity for collaboration. We should talk about it afterwards. Yeah, we should. <laughs> uh, and we, this is the other thing that happens at TechCrunch. <laughs> we bring people together. So we have an operating system. And the beautiful thing about it is that there is a personal health record for every person on HealthTap. So when we deploy it in a disaster area and we know the identity of the people, which because we have the relationship with the company or with the city, then what we can do is actually take this data yeah. and bring it in aggregate to the relief forces to help them direct their aid to the right places, bring the right kind of medication, bring the right kind of equipment, and find people where they are because it's all location-based, yeah. right? We're collecting the location as well. So when we know the people, there's actually a big advantage, but there are costs associated in doing it. And also we're thinking about sustainability right. and building a big company around it as well. Well, so this is an issue that's actually um, fairly close to, to, to me. Um, I grew up in Louisiana. Uh, I was in Baton Rouge, which is my hometown, uh, when Hurricane Katrina hit and in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, actually, I went down and I was um, helping with relief efforts. I was manning phone banks, actually, just trying to locate people who had been scattered by the U.S. government in their woefully inept response to that crisis, <laughs> um, to the four winds, um, where families were were um, were lost, separated, I, you know, and we're still dealing with the ramifications of that as as a state, as a country. Right. Um, 
one of the things that Jimmy Wales brought up earlier on stage is this notion that governments are just woefully unaware and ignorant of the role that technology can play. Right. Um, do you see that as an obstacle in sort of outreach for your own businesses? Are governments the stumbling block to actually deploying technology in crisis scenarios? And, and how does that, how, how can you as entrepreneurs uh, educate them or, or what, what can be done to, to help facilitate uh, a closer relationship between government and the tech companies that can solve these problems? I'll give you an example. So uh, Please do. There's a, <laughs> there's, a, there's a case study that was written at the business school at Stanford about HealthTap. Right? Right. It's following us in the last three years. It's taught as part of the core curriculum of the, of the first year students. So not just an example, but a humble brag to you. <laughs> I, I like it, I like it. Well done. <laughs> so but continue. <laughs> so we went there last week, right? And we, we talk about the development of the company. And then I'm telling about the store in Chennai and I'm very excited about it before we launched the product and saying, you know, how, how cool it was to be able to take you know, 85,000 physicians and deploy thousands of them in like in like short couple of hours yeah. and help a lot of people. And then one of the students from the class, like randomly after class comes to us and said, you know what, now I know which app it was because everyone in Chennai was talking about this thing. <laughs> right? Amazing. So, so I think that like educating people yeah. by doing things before you sell them, do them, show efficacy. I think that then people start talking about it, then sell in the path of least resistance, which is the big companies, right? Because they have an interest and they have the budget and they care about their people, so it's much easier to sell. And then go up to the governments to, to see the efficacy, to show the efficacy, and then do the work with them together. I would, I would just add, I think there's two things that when we interface uh, with uh, governments that are stumbling blocks. One is just awareness of the technology. You were sort of hinting at that. Awareness of what is possible. You know, we just had the COP negotiations and we went there because we were like, does anyone know that there's data is coming <laughs> and that we can track every tree on the planet every single day and that might be helpful for figuring out the mechanisms to, uh, 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 of, the, of the climate accords and how to measure and verify them. Um, and all the other parts of it, you know. Um, same with the Sustainable Development Goals. You know, we, these are, this is, if you think about the global agenda, satellite data can help with a whole number of them. Like, um, uh, the, uh, the vast majority of the SDGs, we could help track somewhere. And the first problem we fi face is that, of course, most people don't, in the policy-making situations, mostly government officials, don't n even know about it. First problem. Second problem is they're not... Uh, easily able to be agile. So if they could more quickly adapt to and take in on, on board that technology, you know, the time scale of the evolution of policy and law tends to be years, and uh, the evolution of our technology tends to be weeks and months. And that, that mismatch it causes a challenge. So somehow we need to... Uh, so I think, I think the two things we need to get is more awareness through education of policymakers and then them ad ad adapting their systems to be slightly more agile, to be able to take in new data and technologies yeah. more swiftly when it comes about. They've just got to change the system a little bit. Well, so just as Ron just is working, <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, just as Ron is working with, with, with sort of corporations on this where there are, are clear benefits for those populations and, yeah. and, and maybe the companies in some cases have a better sense of their stakeholders and the value of their employees than, than governments do of their citizens, which is yeah. sad, but in many cases probably true. Yeah. Um, for you, is it, is it a matter of circumventing government through well, NGOs or, well, or how do you, or, or do you have to how do just I get in front of them yeah. and shake them Look, until they we, recognize We will work with every, any, anyone and everyone that's, that's interested in using this data to, yeah. to help, help people and other life. So, you know, and, and for sure, right out of the gate, the NGOs are right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the research community and the, a lot of the small folks and the high-tech companies. And the governments can be a little bit slow. Actually, in Earth Observation, there's a really quite uh, cool system uh, that was agreed on internationally where everyone at times of disaster response, like big floods, fires, hurricanes, so forth, earthquakes, they actually all donate their data um, from all Earth imaging satellites to... Uh, for that basis. 
And so there's a system in place for that, but there's not a system in place for the more general thing of regularly monitoring agriculture or water level of all the reservoirs or all the trees to stop deforestation on the the day-to-day -day, mm. uh, uh, um, things that need help around the world. If, if we could just wrap up with, with one final point. As you think about the ways in which technology is applied in, in crises, um, what would you, what would be sort of the one piece of recommendation that you would offer to governments to, to sort of help their populations in these scenarios, other than to work with Planet Labs and work with HealthTap <laughs> on, on, uh, on rolling out their products, y'all's products? Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's all about, you know, it's, it's something is on our end and something is on the government's end. So ma make this whole notion uh, on our end uh, very easy, right, to, you know, when, when these things happen, uh, to, to share the data with the relief forces, right? So if we can create something that is very easy to download by a police officer, right, that needs to see something, when authenticated by the, the government or by the, the relief forces on the ground, it makes it much more, much lower barrier to entry uh, to actually adopt these things. So that's on our end. On their end, I think that if there was an effort, an organized effort to actually create these systems that make it very easy in these kind of situations with, with entities that are proven to do this right and are checked in advance, right? Because that's why we want to sell these things in advance. That's why it's not good to just do it kind of whenever it happens, let's jump in, because then a lot of things happen. No, nobody has time to organize these things. Yeah. So when you sell it in advance and you organize it in advance, then you have all the systems in place. And when it happens, you just go deploy and go, right. go, go and save right. lives and not spend time that is valuable time trying to coordinate where, how do we yeah. share this or how do we send this data from back so, and forth. So just to build off that, I think that's exactly right. Right. I, um, I, th I think, you know, I was saying agility and, and awareness. So, so you know, on, on the awareness side, I would say it, it's, uh, we, we should hold more workshops and education of, of policymakers about the technology that's coming. And then on the agility side, I think, you know, the kind of things that comes to my mind is, is budget allocation that's just reserve set aside for those projects. You set up these mechanisms, uh, if you like, these placeholder contracts or legal mechanisms yeah. to take advantage of technology yeah. and data and stuff in when the time comes with organizations that are able to do that and then when it happens you don't you know you it's not just a complete right. disconnect between the time scale of doing the contract and ha having the data yeah but also you guys are doing a great job i think that this it just this panel and what you're doing here is amazing. I'm right. sure that people in government... That's part of... You, you, you spit the, the words right out of my mouth. There's no better <laughs> source for awareness than TechCrunch. I'm going to let a... Uh, I'm going to end the panel right there because why not? It's a plug for us. I'm happy to do it. And uh, gentlemen, I'll let you talk backstage. It was a pleasure. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks very much, Thank John. You. Thank you, awesome. sir. Thank you. Thanks, man. Awesome. Awesome.